Felix here, and good morning to you. What a happy, green, rallying, colorful morning it is. And what are the main reasons for that? Well, one, we're feeling slightly more optimistic about the Fed. Two, there's a rumor out that China might reopen at some point in 2023, which of course will be marvelous. Um, we'll walk through that. We'll talk through that to see what's actually true, what isn't. Uh, Neo also reported numbers, which we'll run through, and much, 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 much more market depth. Understanding what's really driving the market here, earnings, uh, windfall taxes, inflation, rate hikes, and everything uh, in, in one here. Before we do any of that, get your pause on that one. America's 662 scariest stocks. These stocks are going to run out of money. And if your stock is on that list, well, I think you're going to want to know. So go, go to felixruns.org slash 662. It's free and it's a benchmark that looks rather glorious and is, uh, is very nice and long and crikey. What's going on here? Let's make sure we're on the right screen. Here we go. So one of the reasons the market's rallying here this morning is that Jay's, that's Jerome Powell, <laughs> chair of the Federal Reserve, his favorite yield curve, yeah, he has a favorite yield curve. Like many people have, you know, a favorite pet or something. He has a favorite yield curve. And it's the three-month uh, over 18-month uh, treasury yield. So normally, in a normal world, a longer term would pay you a higher yield than a shorter term. When it goes the other way around, it basically tells you the world is bananas and the world has gone gaga, the loons are in charge and a recession is coming. And that's what this chart rather nicely illustrates. If I could find a pen, I'll show you what I mean. So you see here, we went negative on the white line and then we got a recession. That's a big red recession. That's a recession. That was 2000 and this is 2008 and so on. So again, we went negative here, we get a recession. We went negative here, we got a recession. And are we about to go negative here? We're pretty close to it. So it's pretty staggering. And it's definitely something that Jay Powell is reading this morning whilst perusing his um, Wall Street Journal has been ironed by his manservant and having his bath run for him. Now, are rates going to stay higher for longer? Well, the, the, the miseries at Goldman's say yes. And why do they say that? Because they're essentially saying inflation is going to stay higher for longer. Therefore, rates are going to stay higher for longer. It's 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 that deep. That's really uh, what, what those guys come up with. Very, very clever, high, highly paid people. But this is a little bit more the, the backstory to it. So we've seen this incredible amount of wastage of money, sorry, um, social spending by governments on all sorts of nonsense. And it's come down. So... What's going to go happen in 2023? Well, it hasn't really got much to come down by. Therefore, there isn't really this slowing in the economy. There isn't this disinflationary force out there from a Fed po federal government point of view because they've slowed spending, but they're not going to slow it much more because politicians like to spend money, right? It's how they stay popular, strangely enough, with the very people who are paying for it, taxpayers. So therefore, likely, what we're going to see is... First of all, incomes going up, nominal incomes going up, real incomes in red here ticking up somewhat uh, after 2022, which is the year of misery. Anybody who has a job now earns less money than before, unless you are in investing wisely, which is why I always focus on that. So that picking up is actually going to support the economy. So it's going to be inflationary, right? So therefore, the Fed is going to keep rates at high levels for longer, say the smart bods in the Midtown Vests there. And now, of all you neophiles, Neo's reported delivery numbers, which are not bad. 10,000 vehicles, I think, is reasonable, but it's also not like flying. But at least it's like the fourth month in a row here of... 10,000, well, the fifth month in a row of more than 10,000 vehicles. And if you split this month or June into May, then it's kind of like six months running. So that's kind of the run rate at the moment, right? It's 10,000 10, vehicles a month, but it's not going up. What does that mean? Well, Q3 was decent. Q4 so far looking on track, but not really on track to grow massively. So you're sort of on track to grow 30%, but not really much, much more. Now there is one thing, actually, two things that concern me about this. One is 
The old SUVs here in blue, the ES8, ES6, EC6, are tanking. I mean, they really, really are falling off a cliff, which is a little bit more than expected. Um, and it kind of shows that we are cannibalizing. And that's possibly an intentional move because they have limited production capacity or limited parts. So they'd rather sell the new models than the old ones. But it's definitely showing that the new models are not bringing the uptick in delivery numbers that we were hoping for. ET5 rollout also slower than expected, despite being told that it would be much, much faster ramp up than previous. Doesn't look it, to be honest with you. Look at the ET7 ramp up here from April to May. That was way quicker. And um, why is that? COVID. So they've been restricted due to COVID. They've been working part shifts. The certain production lines aren't running. And apparently now both factories are essentially shut down. So COVID keeps haunting NEO and all us uh, Chinese equity investors. The question is really, is it going to get any better? Well, how Hong says it will, and he's a CFA, he must know. He says that, as it, well, he doesn't say, someone heard that a reopening committee has been formed led by Wang Huning, uh, who was a Politburo standing member, and they're going to review COVID data and reassess opening scenarios. I don't want to be a bear here, but if you're going to assess and you heard and you were forming and you were reviewing scenarios with a target that isn't particularly specific. So I wouldn't really, I know Hong Kong shares, A shares rallied today on this. The stock Chinese space is, is flying on the handle on, on this optimism. Here it is. PDD up 9%, NEO up 7% and, and so on. And that's wonderful. I'm enjoying it. But it's we've heard this sort of thing before and it wasn't necessarily true now, of course none of the above all the below is financial advice i think you know that by now but do bear it in mind why because the point of being here is that you become a better investor the point is not that you sort of like run around and go well felix said it therefore it must be true because i take all of my advice from winston he's a golden retriever so think that through so I'm cautious on this, I must say, very cautious on this. We've had so much up and down that I want to see a lot more of that. But going back to the United States, and um, I will, of course, walk through your questions in a second here, guys. Uh, so, so, so keep asking them in the chat. I'll run through them in, in a second. So the US president, in its infinite wisdom, has decided that he'll institute some sort of windfall tax on oil, because, of course, it is oil, big oils mistake and failure that we have inflation. Well, that's what you would say if you're a politician trying to run for office, right? You were not going to say, we screwed this up on a scale no one ever imagined one could screw things up. So XLE, which is the S&P 500 energy segment, has done incredibly well this year, and it might not continue to do outperform quite as much. So watch out on that. If you've got earnings on the, in the energy space, this, this might hit us a little bit. Now we're going to get jobs data out later today. Super, super important set of data. This here is the quits rate, US quits rate. And why is that important? You don't quit your job when you don't think you can get another one. So you want that number to go down. You want the quit the quits rate, sorry, you want the quits rate to go up. So you want... Sorry, let me think that through. You want the quits rate to go down. If less people quit their jobs, it means that they find think it's harder to find a new one. So that's a positive for the stock market, but that is just reversing a little bit of a trend here. There's still a fairly long way to go, right? So we're still at very, very elevated levels. We kind of want to get this back down to the, where's my pen? To, to sort of hear these kind of levels. So we're kind of like at pre-pandemic levels. That's sort of where we want to be. And, and we're not quite there yet. But it's at least it's a little step in the, in the positive direction. Slightly bigger step in the positive direction is our lovely options portfolio. I've done every single one of these trades either live or shared them with you in the, in the options community. So we're up 103%. I hope you're doing all right this year too. And uh, you can learn how we do that by uh, giving us a ring at felixfrenzelog slash coaching. And what do you need for it? A five, six, seven, eight, nine figure portfolio. That's what you need. And, and some motivation. That's what we ask for. And if you're not quite there yet with the 
five figures plus in your portfolio, by that I mean, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars sort of type thing, then um, check out the Master Options program. It's a pre recorded program, 100 le lessons plus. You get to see me trade live every week. You see my Master Options trading portfolio and you have live chat support daily. So it's an amazing program that will help you build that second income stream. So or third or fourth or fifth, depending on what you're doing already. So check out felixfrenz.org slash options. Join literally thousands of students who are in that marvelous community and accelerate your wealth to creation. That's really the most important part. It's not actually about picking the greatest stocks out there. If you want to accelerate help, that helps in the long term, in the 10 or, 10 or 20 year time frame. But in the short term, it's very, very, very much about how much income you can put in there. So in the long term, that also helps tremendously. Now, why is the market also flying? Because the bond market has sort of changed its tune a little bit. If I take you back a month, a month ago, the market was, this is, this is December. So this is the 14 December, the rate hike expectation. And this here is 0.75% hike. And this here is 0.5% hike. This is a quarter of a percent hike. And if we go back a month ago, we were at 44%. So I'm going to put this in blue. Uh, so one month ago, this was 44% or 45%. And this was still 53%, which is roughly where we are right now. And nobody, uh, this was zero. So you can see we've kind of like massively shifted up in terms of rate expectations to a much, much higher level. But that's from a month. Whereas if you look at from a week ago, you are actually seeing that I'm going to do that in uh, in red. So this is this is one week ago. This number has gone up. And that number has gone down. So the expectations of a 75 basis point rate hike are declining for December. As we are kind of looking at global central banks having maybe overdone it and maybe slowing down a little bit. Um, oh my God, there is an animated thumbs up icon. Who doesn't want to see that animation? Surely the most exciting thing that's going to happen to all of us today. Smash the like button, guys, and you'll see something you may have never seen in. Uh, did you miss something, Georgia? You, you, you did probably. Uh, but uh, Winston for the win. I'm getting a cucumber. Winston does love his cucumbers. Um, I don't know what that is about golden retrievers and cucumbers. Now, earnings. We've got some earnings out, and I haven't looked at all of these yet, but SoFi's numbers look pretty good. Uh, Uber also out this morning. I haven't looked at that. We can do that together. And then after the close, we're getting AMD. We're getting Airbnb. Uh, a business I still fail to understand, but that might be my limited thinking. Uh, tomorrow morning, also CVS Health. And then after close, we are going to get tomorrow Etsy, Roku, Albemarle, and then in the morning, Royal Caribbean, Conoco, Phillips, Crocs, one of the highest margin businesses I've ever come across. Those ugly, rubbery, plasticky things that they make, credible margin. And then, of course, some real, um, I was going to say terrible businesses, but you know what I mean. Peloton and Nicola. That's just my opinion. That's not an objective view. Uh, so when am, I, when am I going to start trading these? I'm going to start trading these from Thursday morning onwards, so the, the Friday, Wednesday after close as well, because uh, here is where the Fed speaks on Wednesday, and I'm going to avoid that. Uh, and, and that's what I'm telling my, my students uh, to consider, because a lot of risk in that meeting, and I don't like risk. I like profits. I don't like risk. Now, let's look at a little bit of technicals and where the market's heading. And then I will do a quick recap and, of course, take some questions. So the short-term setup, it looks much, much better. We might see, I think we could see a 4% rally up. That doesn't mean we, we will. It depends, of course, on the Fed. But sort of that's kind of how we're set up. Uh, I think we're still, everybody is still short. And therefore, when we go up, they unwind and we go higher. Um, so hitting the mid-August highs seem possible, but to, to preserve those gains, if we do get them, the Fed needs to move. Uh, and, and actually, if you go up 4%, something like 80% of stocks would move above the 50-day the moving average line, which would be you know kind of pretty, pretty bullish. And now CTAs, which is basically dumb money, it's the 
well, I'd say dumb money, nothing dumb about it really, but they're sort of somewhat automatically deployed by algorithms that look at technicals and, and fundamentals to some extent. And at the moment, uh, have they got any money in, in, in stocks? Where did my pen go again here? Uh, not really. They're sort of down here. So they're in a negative territory. Very, very little. 10% uh, is the current allocation of, of, of this, these billions and billions in funds that are in equities. Very, very little. So if we move up one percentage point, you get about 10 billion into the market. If we move up, say, three percentage points, you get 20 billion coming into the market. Uh, and that's kind of the one of the reasons we're getting, you know, rallies are exaggerated because everyone's using options, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, we're partly partly to blame for. And then there is all this 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 automated money behind it. So therefore, um, market moves get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that volatility is a lovely thing. We can trade it. We can make a lot of money out of it as we do. So, you know, check it out. Give us a ring. Um, however, however. I think the speed of the more medium term recovery, and I'm sort of talking here past December, might be slower than some people expect. I don't think we're going to come out of this flying quite as quickly as some people would like. Why? Because doing nothing pays. Uh, doing nothing now pays you 4.5% if you buy a six-month treasury, or it pays you 6.5% if you buy US BBB corporate bonds, which are decent, and still have a risk you know, decent if you buy an ETF or not or something. So doing nothing actually pays you quite a lot. And therefore, quite a lot of funds will do absolutely nothing because they think, well, I could either back four and a half to six and a half percent, or I could potentially lose half my money. So which one am I going to do? Either they've had a really good year, especially the hedge funds, and they're going to say, well, I'm going to preserve it and do nothing for the rest of the year uh, so that I can write that Christmas letter to my investors and go, I am really, really clever, aren't I? Um, or they've had a terrible year and they're thinking, well, we're not going to make it worse, are we? So they're not going to do anything. So that's kind of what we are heading into at the end of the year. Now, what to buy in terms of stocks as we're heading into this recession, officially, unofficially, or you know, what, what, whatever? Uh, well, first of all, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to run out and buy tobacco stocks or something like that. But this is just some data that I thought might be useful. Recessions basically favor pharma, biotech, real estate, utilities, consumer services, food, beverage, tobacco, media, and telecom services, um, which is also part of the sort of stagflation setup. Now, what underperforms? Materials, autos. Nobody buys stuff they don't need. Banks. Consumer durables, so durables are the problem here, stuff you can don't have to replace, and transport. And uh, this is a nice bit of, bit of data, essentially, which shows you what, what happens uh, when, um, you know, when you have a stagflation, a contraction is a recession, and, and you can see which sectors do well. So basically, these guys do well in a recession, put an R here. Uh, stagflation, pretty similar, except for media and telecoms. And, and, and yeah, that's sort of kind of what does well and what does really horribly. Autos, comps, banks, materials down here, they do really, really, really badly. So uh, take a screenshot of it if you like as a bit of data. Of course, data is just data. You can massage data and so on. So don't be, uh, you know, don't throw all your money at it. But it's, I think I think it's a good, good place to kind of start some research from. Now, let me take some questions and then we'll do a quick recap. Anyone who's just joined of what's actually going on here, let's have another quick look actually at the market. Futures are bright and green. Volatility is down a little bit. The dollar is down a bit as people are feeling a little exuberant, happy and excited. Coin up 3.7%. Oh, I wonder if that coin trade that we're talking about might be might be time to look at that. Where is, where is um, BTC trading at? 2550. I think it was 2600. I think is what we wanted. Okay. I'll have a look at that afterwards. Uh, sorry for the, for the sidetrack. Sometimes my mind goes down a rabbit hole of a trade I have in my mind. So stock market, right? What's going up the most out of the sort of big boys and apart from China. So China is flying a new up 8.6%, um, reopening rumors on China. Personally, I am cautious on that. Uber and SoFi seem to have impressed with earnings. Let me see if we can pull them up. 
or 16 hours ago. The tickets are not quick enough, are they? Associated Press, get to work. Nope, still haven't put it out. Okay, I'll, I'll look at that later. Uh, X bang up, I do up, Barbar up 6%, but only at $67. Crikey. Uh, Beyond Meat is up 3%. So all the risk stuff is basically flying. Etsy up 2.5%. Palantir up 2% to $9. Tesla at 2.32. PayPal up 2% reports Thursday at $85. AMD reports tomorrow is up 2%. Everything is up, basically. Polster up to 4.5%. Nike up to 94%. Amazon up 1.8 percentage points. Macy's up. Netflix up 1.5%. Google up 1.5%. Apple up 1.5%. Meta up 1.5%. The whole world has gone up. What hasn't? Mullen. <laughs> uh, well, I think for once the market is being quite fair here on Mullen, that is. Student loans were starting in January. Do you expect that to slow inflows to the markets? No, no, sorry, Kyle. I, I don't think that's quite quite enough money to really affect markets here. We've got we're talking about are we gonna get 20 or 60 billion in like CTA money coming in this month? So no, I don't think student loans are gonna matter. Twitter money, on the other hand, that 40 billion or whatever it is, that's gotta go somewhere. So that's that's a little bit more interesting, I think, where that's gonna go. Um, uh, Kyle says, um, yeah, the earnings call, yeah, yeah, so far, uh, they, they are going to make options trading available for the end of the year, uh, which probably will lead more people down the garden path of buying leaps and buying calls and losing their shirt. If you don't want to be part of that gang, seriously learn how to actually trade options. Uh, what you see on Robin Hood and on Reddit and all of that, it's gambling. It's just gambling. 50-50 chance at best, probably less than that. So if you want to gamble, go and have some fun and, and drink some champagne or something, uh, don't throw your money, hard earned money away. Learn how we actually trade. Go to slash options. That's our sort of program, which runs you through in about 100 lectures of how to actually trade, what it actually means and how banks actually do it. Uh, so check it out. Coupon code there is freedom. And for those of you who are a little bit further ahead in your investing life and income life, uh, you have five, six, seven, eight, or nine figures in your portfolio. Uh, go to FelixRanzerLog slash coaching, give us a call, and you can learn from me and my team directly. And um, who's my team, you wonder? Former investment bankers with decades of experience trading options and university lecturers. So you're not getting some kid who just figured out how it works. You're getting people who've actually done this for institutions who are doing it for institutions um, and, 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 and are making money. So that's what we want to want to teach you uh, so that you, you know what's going on here. Are the student loans going to help so far? Yeah. So once that ends, if that does end, and I still say if because I don't believe politicians ever, that will be very helpful so far so far. What do you think happens in the markets if Democrats or, or, or red, is a red wave in the US? Honestly, politics have a lot less influence on the markets than you think. Um, capitalism is a strong beast and we continue to make money no matter who's in government pretty much. So I wouldn't really uh, worry about that too much. Uh, thank you, Mac. You are very, very kind. Um, I, I, I painted those. Um, Guilty as charged. I know they're a little fuzzy in the background, but yeah, no, I I, I like to oil paint. Uh, it's good fun. Very um, sort of calming, really, on the mind. I get good ideas when I do it, and then I'm covered in paint, and I'm like, I've got to write it down somewhere. Um, and then there's there's oil paint everywhere, but it's good fun. Uh, let me let me run back up if I missed any questions here from anybody. Otherwise, just please repeat them in the chat because there's a lot of chat here, which I appreciate, but I might might have uh, missed some of them. Uh, Winston for the for the win. I appreciate that China bull run trap, Matt. I think I'm with you on that one, unfortunately. Flip, flip, flip. I'm going to use that word until you click. That's a that's a nice rhyme. I like it. Uh, good morning, Robert. Good morning, Ben. Good morning, Lost in BKK here. And and Marcelo. Yep, I think you are. You got the facts straight there. Looks like the whole class is here, says Jerome. Yeah, a lot of the coaching community is, is on here this morning, which is brilliant. Uh, Steve, Nick, uh, uh, everyone on here, thank you very much for tuning in, guys. Your cup looks amazing. Um, what cups are this one? 
this is about 50 cents from a little store in Hong Kong somewhere. These are just very, very ordinary uh, cups, but they are quite nice. They come with lids too, so your tea stays warm. Have Alexa take a note? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit suspicious of those things. I don't, I don't have them. I, I, I don't have them. I, actually, I don't have Alexa, but I have um, speakers that could turn it on, but I don't. I turn it off. I don't really want... I don't really want Amazon or Google or someone listening on my every conversation more than they probably already are. No, you're kidding me. You have a golden retriever named Winston? Well, we must be soulmates. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Uh, pull on his ears gently for me. Um, is Winston buying tobacco-related stocks? So this is a, a reference. Um, the most popular to cigarette cigarette brand in the Philippines is 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 called uh, Winston. So uh, people always chuckle if, if they're from that part of the world. What do you think about Meta? Look, I think fundamentally their numbers are still brilliant. I think the fact that they're spending $90 billion on, on, on God knows what is kind of insane. So I think some cost management um, and, and, and still some sort of obviously future investment project is, is the right thing to do. Uh, how to tell whether or not what they're doing is, is going to turn out well. But then we all said the same thing about Amazon for like 15 years, right? And at least Meta is making the money that they're spending. Uh, Owen just tuned in. All right, let's do a quick recap then. Um, so markets are green. Markets are rallying, especially Chinese stocks on rumors that China is going to, well, I'll show you in a second. As China is essentially thinking about setting up potentially a committee that may consider the possibilities of what reopening might look like. Now, if that gives you a lot of confidence for your stocks to go up 10%, then uh, you are a little bit more easily moved than me. Uh, but What's also moving markets here is Jerome Powell's preferred yield curve. <laughs> That's a funny one, isn't it? If you want to send him a present, send him his favorite yield curve, is uh, is tanking and it's looking to, towards inversion. Now, when in a yield curve like this inverts, like it did in 2000, what happens? You get a recession. And then it did that again in, what was that, 2008 or something, seven. Uh, you get a recession here. And at the moment, uh, well, Beer was tanking. We got a recession here. And at the moment, it looks very much like it's heading that way again. So now you think there's a recession. I think there is a recession. Everybody who's, who's you know, calm and sensible thinks a recession. But imagine you live in, you know, the Upper East Side and your wood paneled rooms and um, Jeeves brings you your uh, iced martini. And then you get your helicopter to the Hamptons where a uh, a glass of champagne is waiting for you. You might not realize that you are in a recession. So you have to forgive these guys in the banking world that they don't really realize that that's actually going on. Uh, and therefore, they don't believe it till the numbers show them that. And, and the numbers are very much pointing in that direction. And that's a good thing. Why? Because it means the Fed is going to potentially go a little bit more easy on us uh, down, down the road. And we look at that as well. Now, the Goldman bankers, who are very much in that boat, sorry, yacht, uh, are uh, saying rates are going to stay higher for longer. And, and why is that? Because they say inflation is going to stay at like 4%, uh, even in April 2023, and even in January 2024, it's still going to be above three percentage points. And that's core CPI. And therefore, they're saying, look, the Fed's going to keep their rates up. And why do they say that's going to happen? Because what we're looking at from their data is that all the uh, the helicopter money, uh, that the, the government sort of chucked out of the window and, 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 and you know, ended up in people's savings accounts, which is where the Fed doesn't want it to have. The Fed doesn't want you to have savings. It's much, much better if you don't. That way they can maneuver the market more. So that's kind of kind of come out now. And so we know that. And that's kind of reducing GDP. That's reducing expenditure. That's good to reduce inflation. But there isn't much else that they can cut or are willing to cut. So what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is that income is going to keep crawling up in 2023. And even real disposable income, which is that red line here, this one, which is kind of tanked this year, right? It's come down into 2022. Um, so you are you're worse off if you have a job at the moment, which is why you must invest uh, and, and learn how to do that yourself. Otherwise, you're literally working for less than you were earning a couple of years back. Uh, it's going to cr crawl back up to a about a 4% growth rate at the end of 2023 and therefore that's going to be inflationary again so that's what 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 the goldman bankers are saying from their um 
you know, wood paneled rooms. A quick update for all the, you NEO investors out there. NEO has uh, delivered another 10,000 vehicles in October, which is, yeah, it's decent. It's about six months in a row now of, of 10,000 vehicles a month. So it's solid, but it's not growth, right? We want growth. And what particularly worries me on that, and, and this is, it's not bad news, but it's not like great news, is that the old models, which are here in blue on my chart, look at how much they're coming down, right? They're really, really, really tanking. And at the same time, the ramp up for new models isn't really as quick as we'd like them to be. And why is that COVID? So there have been restrictions on supply chain, on COVID. They're not working at full capacity. One of their production lines is down. And as of now, apparently, factory one and factory two are shut down for COVID. So, yeah. Are we going to get the Q4 bump that we want? Hard to tell. Very hard to tell at this point. At this point, politics is the key risk here. And this is what's making the market rally. Apparently, a reopening committee has been formed, uh, led by a fairly senior chap. And this committee is reviewing COVID data from the US, Hong Kong, Singapore to assess various opening scenarios targeting a March 2023 reopen. Chinese stocks are flying on it. I believe it when I see it. That's all I'm going to say on this one. So the uh, US president has had his greatest idea ever. He woke up and said, you know what? Let's blame everything on the oil people. They don't vote for me anyway. So let's blame that lot. And apparently there's going to be a windfall tax on oil giants in the US. So if you are exposed to XLE or, or you know, Exxon or anything like that, energy sp stocks, which have done tremendously well this year, it might be a time to reassess that, take some profits because that might get hit. Jobs is what we're getting today. We're getting, where is it? Where is it? We're getting, crikey, it's a lot of data. Uh, why do we get the whole world? Uh, we get job opening data out today at 10 a.m. Eastern. Is that 10 a.m. Eastern? I don't know. What's 4 p.m.? We've changed the time zone in Europe. It's like completely maddening. I, I don't know what time of the day it is, to be honest with you. But yeah, in, in, in a in, in two hours, uh, we're getting drop opening data, and that's going to be important. Drop quits data, also very important. That's what I'm showing you here, because people only quit their job if they think they can get another job. So job quits rates are coming down. We want that to go down further. We want that to go down another, what is that, 20% or so? Uh, and that will imply to us that the market's kind of back to sort of equilibrium. So it's a, it's a fair, fair way to go. And that what we want, don't want to go down, what we want to keep going up is our stock portfolio, which, uh, sorry, options portfolio, which is up 103% so far this year. We've made 11% so far this month. We've got a couple of trades open that I'll probably close out before the Fed meeting tomorrow just to de-risk. That's what we can do. We can say, oh, big risk coming up, big storm ahead. Why don't we just close everything? And then we do it again on Thursday. That's precisely what we're doing. That's what we're also going to do with earnings this week. Uh, Oleg, thank you very much. Sofa repeats 20% last earnings. Happy that I'm big at 498. Uh, Nazo, you're very kind. Appreciate that. Good morning to you too. Silver is up. Okay. You got your solar panels today. That's probably a smart move. Pierre, good move to get out of oil, I would probably think. I think it might have some legs to go, but so it's not really about oil. It's more about American oil stocks. To what extent are they going to get hit and to what extent is that priced in? Uh, what about going long VIX before Fed meeting? I've got a trade on which is short VIX, but from like a VIX of 35. So I, you know, you, you have a choice when you set up a trade where you can basically either be safe or you can gamble, right? So say we look at the VIX here. Here's the VIX at 25. So what, what are your options? Well, you could say long. So you could say, I'm going to make money if this goes up from here, right? 50-50% uh, chance of making money. Or you can set it up a little bit more smartly and say, this is what we've done. Here is our line up there. We're going to make money if the VIX is anywhere in this range, like literally to zero. From 35 to zero, we make money. 
What do you think is a higher probability from 25 up or from 35 all the way down to zero? Well, yours is 50-50, mine's about 85%. So it doesn't mean you have to play my direction, but that's the way I would set it up. I would look at, well, you could look at 20 all the way up, but I wouldn't do this binary black and white up or down scenario because you have a 50% chance of making money. That's a pretty pretty rubbish way to be. Uh, so options are not made for that. Options are meant to like set you up as, a, as an advantage. Uh, yes, correct. Uh, SoFi is going to have options trading at the end of the year. I look at that with a slightly mixed feeling because I just know a lot of people will trade options and not understand what they're doing. And they're just going to start buying buying leaps and, and hope and pray for the best with maybe a 30% chance of making money. And they don't understand time and they don't understand volatility and they don't understand really what you are meant to be doing with it. You're meant to be market neutral. You're meant to be hedged or even if you're directional you manage your risk and your downside. And most people are just looking at it as an extension of stocks. It's not. It's an asset class in its own. It's not a stock attachment. Uh, but for that, you need to really learn it from somebody. I think you, you understands how that works. Now, you can, of course, learn that from me. If you wish, if you have at least a five-figure portfolio, you can learn from me and my coaching team of bankers and, and, and university lecturers at felixfenzerorg slash coaching. All you need is a five or six or seven or eight or nine-figure portfolio. Give us a ring. And uh, if you're not quite there yet, if you are uh, just starting out with your investments, brilliant, congrats, like most exciting time to be, seriously, it's the best place to be. Uh, get started, but build the extra income stream, learn how to build that with options, go to felixfranz.org slash options, and you get about 100 pre-recorded lectures, you get to see me trade live every week, you get Q&A uh, chat every single day, so check it out. Do you like copper? Um, yeah, it's a reasonable trade. It's just you need to kind of understand what's what's driving that, right? With anything mining related and commodity trading related, make sure you understand that space. Uh, otherwise, you are, have, have a big, big risk in there. Glenn, straddle pre-Fed announcement, close out, losing side. Honestly, I'd set up the trade after. Because why, when, you, when you know there is the unpredictable ahead, why not avoid it? That's the way I would look at that. How can you go long volatility without delta exposure? Um, that's going to go a little bit beyond the scope of this YouTube video. But yeah, essentially, we can, we can trade volatility. We did a whole one-hour group coaching call on that on Sunday. You can go long vol and... Um, and be not really care about the underlying very much. Ellie used to trade copper. Yeah, I know. I know. You worked at the London Metals Exchange. You would have done. Uh, so it's just what I'm saying is that you need to understand like what he would call the domain of copper. Um, for those of you guys who don't know who Elliot is, Elliot is one of my coaches. He's been an investment banker for 20 years. How weighted is your, uh, your portfolio in orange juice, lady? 100%. All in orange juice. <laughs> That's all we're doing here. Um, Glenn, it's obviously just my opinion. You know, you're very welcome to be anything. And, and you know what, Glenn, what you should do is um, you do your trade idea in paper trading because that way you get some experience out of it. And that's what I always say like to my students. Um, it's an absolutely marvelous time to experiment with things. Just do it in paper trading. Don't do it with your own money because you worked too hard to earn it. So don't chuck it out of the window. But do every mad idea that comes to your, your mind and, and, and just set it up. But do it in paper trading and do it over Fed meetings, do it during earnings and, and see what happens. And you learn some really valuable lessons from that, from that. What do you think on gold stocks? Similar story applies uh, as, to, as to, to, to copper there, really. Like uh, you need to understand the gold market. Um, I, I trade silver sometimes for its lack of correlation to the S&P. PayPal reports Thursday, bad boy, so I'll let you know after I see it on Thursday. But uh, I think cost control is really what, what, what the, we'll be looking at. Given that we've seen the numbers for Visa and MasterCard, which were pretty good, I think PayPal should have a pretty decent set of earnings. Also, I think the eBay numbers are finally out. So I think that should be good. And um, 
but it's going to be a lot about cost control and their like prediction going forward. GMO, yep, thank you very much. Uh, Matt, artist at work here. And now, if you guys have any any other last questions, chuck them into the chat. Uh, that's what we're here for. I appreciate you joining in and appreciate your desire to learn. Uh, for those of you on a five, six, seven, eight, or nine figure portfolio, give us a ring. Find out how to build an extra income stream from us by learning my options trading protocol from me and my team of investment banking coaches and and. and uh, how to actually make money <laughs> with with trading rather than just you know learning the theory it's about strategy rather than theory what's the one advantage that retail investors have over the big dogs other than time to an extent you can set up trades that are too small for institutions so you could trade things that are not as liquid and that could make you money so if you are managing $100 million, you're not going to set up a trade that could make you $2,000 or $10,000, right? So in that sense, there are spots where we can trade that they can't. And uh, we can also pursue strategies that you couldn't necessarily scale to like $100 million, but you could scale them to a million or two or three. Uh, and so that's an advantage. And I think to some extent, we have an advantage on spotting trends and brands that do well early. But what we are missing broadly as retail is, is, a, is a thorough understanding of valuations and strategies that actually work and risk management. Risk management is really the one thing that I think most people are completely lacking. How do you convince the wife to postpone buying a personal house to pick up a few more rental properties? So let's say this is a, a hypothetical person, Kyle, and a hypothetical family. I wouldn't want to get... Uh, you into trouble there. Um, I think the most important thing is that you do your financial planning together, that you have a joint goal, you have joint targets. I recommend, as, as you know, Carl, from the coaching program, um, doing a weekly review and look at what's the return, where would that get you, but also look at like what, what does you actually want? Like, why are you doing it? Why are you working? Why are you learning to invest better? You know, what's the purpose here? And you have to then balance that. And I think there is there is a point of enjoying life, but there is also a point of being being safe and building extra income streams. So I think it's, you know, there isn't a super right or wrong. It depends a little bit on where you're starting off from. And I'm not going to, because I know a little bit more about your finances than you might want me to say on, on, on YouTube here. So I shan't comment into, too deep on that, but drop me a line on the in, in, in the chat if you wish. Uh, but um, yeah, it's it's a balancing act, and I think it's it really comes down to like having that target, that goal mapped out together. Of your jumper, thank you very much, very kind of you. What indicator just flipped? Jay Powell's favorite <laughs> three to eighteen month Treasury yield inversion. Uh, Kunistar is kind of right here, but. A lot of the economy makes money anyway, right? A lot of the economy is is just service provisions that, that company need. You might see less growth, especially in what we just talked about in, in auto, in uh, durables, in, in kind of stuff we don't need to replace. But even in a recession, people still buy lots of stuff and it's a good M&A environment. You can pick up companies on the cheap. It's a good time to cut costs. So companies become more efficient and the margins actually improve. And remember the stock market is forward looking. So we're always like, okay, what happens next year? What happens in 12 months? What happens in 18 months? What happens in five years? That's always what we're looking at. So just because you are in a space where the economy might slow significantly, doesn't mean the stock market necessarily does that. It depends on where we're si signing up there. Uh, Stanley is asking, is there one fee for both the coaching and the trading, or possibly for coaching and trading? Um, Stanley, give us a ring at literally go to phoenixfriends.org slash coaching, links down below. Just book a call. We'll walk you through exactly what the options are and what will be most appropriate for you. Do you own Fiverr stock? No, no, I don't. I looked at Upwork before because I love the platform but I'm staggered they're not making any money. They don't seem to be outsourcing their admin, which is funny because that's what their platform's all about. Uh, I haven't looked at Fiverr's numbers. Yeah, I appreciate all the interesting questions here as well. I think it's nice to round this up with a bit of a chat.
And Fluffing Fluff sums it up quite nicely. Uh, the 10 year has fallen below 4%, says Oleg. Okay, let's have a quick look at that. Uh, where do we go? Here we are. US 10 year. Yep, 3.937. It's coming down quite a bit today, 2.8%. So this is this kind of expectation of Fed pivot, but it's also, bear in mind, it's also a challenge to the Fed, the Fed, and the Fed might like to take that challenge on. So watch out for tomorrow. I'll be live streaming that event live, the Fed press conference. I'll give you my notes and my expectations on that. Uh, so is Winston doing a SoFi video for later? He would very much like to, uh, as long as I can squeeze it in today. Absolutely. And I want to say a huge thank you for everybody tuning in, for everybody watching. Thank you very much for building this community. It's always tremendous fun. A huge thank you to everybody on the coaching community team as well. It's great to have you on the chat here most mornings. Uh, to join that community, check it out, felixrenz.org slash coaching. All you need is a five, six, seven, eight, nine figure portfolio and, and a desire to become a better investor, a desire to build an income stream and maybe leave that nine to five, maybe retire earlier or in more splendor or, you know, wood panel your rooms and throw martini glasses about, whatever it is that, that makes you, makes you, uh, gets, gets you excited. Uh, thanks very much. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.